Salutations, everyone. It is I, Rat Knight, and today I bring you a new series called RimWorld Ye Old Knights, where we are going to be playing as a group of knights who are surviving in an advanced technology world. This miniseries is based on a comment from one of our viewers, as well as the poll that we took not too long ago for me asking you guys what you would rather see as our next miniseries. So, here it is. We have five other factions who have advanced technology on the planet. The Royalty Faction, the Feral Faction, the two groups of Outlanders, and the Pirates. One of the very first things we began doing was building a massive tent to store all our goodies. The last thing that we want is for a bunch of deer and rabbits to come into our camp and begin eating up all our delicious cheese that we brought with us. Lucky for us, our knights were very skilled builders, and it didn't take them long to throw up the community tent to store all our goodies, and they began working on some individual tents for our king as well as themselves. Unfortunately, two of our knights did not have enough cloth for their own tents, so they had to snuggle up next to each other by the fire to stay warm, while everybody else, including our king, ironically named George, were all able to snuggle up by themselves in their tents away from the elements of nature. But of course, after everyone was finished resting, the very next day we would need our own source of food, so we began hunting some alpaca in the area as our cheese and jerked meats wouldn't last. If we were going to survive in this harsh and dangerous land, we would need to begin jerking our own meats. That's right, no more jerked meats that we brought with us. We'd have to kill alpaca, skin the alpaca, gut the al you, you get the idea, I think. But gutting alpaca would only take us so far. We needed to build our own fortress of sorts, like a keep, if you will. So we began working on that on the side of the mountain. We used some of the beautiful wood that we had cut down in this forest to make beautiful walls for our keep as well as beautiful windows so the light could shine in and out and help light up the place. Then we even had our very first visitor to come and visit our keep. He was a handsome man wearing a beautiful maid's dress, I suppose. I decided while we were waiting on our keep to be built, we would put down some nice and mostly sanitary wood flooring in our tent so everyone would be a bit happier. These rustic planks even have a beauty of plus two. We had our very first event happen with a vicious mad squirrel with rabies or something like that, I'm sure. But the force of a crossbow bolt quickly stopped its rampage. And then we began cutting up stone chunks to use for our defenses. If there's one thing a keep slash fortress needs, it's big stone walls to protect everyone on the inside. We needed a name for a faction and for a settlement, so I went with the House of Rat. Obviously, our sigil would also be a rat, and we went with Rat's Mountain as the settlement name after yours truly. Even monarchs and nobles need recreation from time to time, though, so we built a hoopstone ring for everyone to have some fun. You can see George engaging in a riveting game of hoopstone by himself. While we were mining out the mountain for our keep, we seemed to hit a vein of some kind of strange glowing ore that looked like it gave everyone cancer. Not really sure what it was. But beside the uranium in the mountain, we have George and our knight Busto who have fallen in love. Oh, what a beautiful day to behold. Not so beautifully though, we had our very first raid and the person raiding us was a pirate who is actually Busto and another knight's aunt. Oh my god. God, what are the chances? Such a betrayal could not go unpunished, though. Even on the day that Busto has fallen in love, we would need to murder her aunt. Yes, I know what you're saying. Why not try and capture the aunt instead of murdering her? But listen, we're all about honor here, not pity. And sometimes in life, you must do things to protect your honor, like murder your aunt and also build massive walls around your keep out of marble that are just beautiful but will also soon be smeared with lots and lots, I mean a lot, of blood, okay? But all the blood is besides the point. Anyhow, we now have a quest for the fleeing duchess. It would appear a duchess from the royalty faction on this planet is calling for help. She's apparently being hunted by a squirrel. Uh, kind of pathetic, but okay. This poor fool thought we were willing to help, but truly there could only be one kingdom on the planet, so we arrested her and then began to enslave her. Unfortunately for her, we ye old knights probably were not as accommodating as her royal family and whatnot. 
we thought it may be a good idea to go ahead and set up some traps and whatnot because, you know, capturing some royalty normally comes with some sort of consequences. I would be expecting a raid in the near future. But before the raid could even take place, the Duchess got a bit of a wild hair and decided to go berserk and try and break herself out of her prison. So of course we quickly stepped in and peacefully negotiated her surrender. After beating the Duchess to a pulp and tossing her back into her cell, I thought, we have such a beautiful grand hall, but truly what is a grand hall without a grand hearth to warm the grand hall? So we built one, of course. We even built our King George and his lover their very own room with their very own comfy double bedroll. It would appear that they were also very fond of it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but for real though, they did seem to enjoy it. Not long after that, we had our very first trade caravan coming from one of the nearby Outlander groups. They were quite friendly with us and had some very strange technologies with them. We didn't have much to trade, but we sold what we could and began a small fortune of sorts. And by small fortune, I really mean about 20 pieces of silver, but anyhow, we finally enslaved the Duchess that we had imprisoned so long ago. It took quite a while, her will was strong, but eventually her spirit broke in the might of our knights and George's sword. Not long after enslaving her as a sign of humiliation, we also decided to force her to renounce her title as Duchess in the filthy empire, and also strip her of her crown. A filthy slave from a filthy empire does not deserve a crown, she is no longer a duchess, and this crown belongs to a true monarch, such as our King George. Ah, look at the shine on that crown as it glistens in the rainfall. I know George just cannot wait to smother it in the blood of his enemies. To truly signify George's new monarchy and his reign over these new lands that we will be conquering, we decided to hold a ritual of sorts and just kind of let him give a speech and give him the true role of a monarch here. And it truly was a beautiful ceremony, but my friends, this is going to conclude the very first episode of our new miniseries, RimWorld Yield Nights. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and I appreciate the support on this channel. If you're not subscribed already, I would really appreciate if you'd done so, and leave a like for me on this video and all that junk that everybody else says on this platform. But truly, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.